One of the most difficult techniques in photography to teach is composition. I often get inquiries about the metadata, that is, matters like shutter speeds and apertures. But if you are thinking that that is going to improve your composition, then I'm sorry, I'm going to have to disappoint you. Composition, where does that come from? It comes from up there, something perhaps I cannot explain, especially for myself. Nevertheless, I'm going to show you now a dozen of my images, images I have enjoyed taking over the years, and I'll try and offer some explanation as to how I took the pictures and what I was thinking about at the time of photography. So here goes. The big view, as we see here, taken in the Lake District, 2,000 odd feet above sea level. The danger is that you have a two-dimensional view. What is important is to have foreground interest. Here it is the rocks bottom left that leads to the beautiful light on the grasses. Then you've got the town and finally the mountains. And so all four elements come together to create the third dimension. I think it works quite nicely. Don't you? This shot I slipped in is a bit of an oddity, really. I've only put it in because it got 10 out of 10 in my local camera club competition. It's all foreground. Yes, the patterns on the sand are attractive. But to look further, there is no focal point. It is a pattern picture created out of simplicity. Now I think the next picture works a little better on this particular theme. So let's have a look at it. Now here, patterns in the sand, and I placed myself quite deliberately over this, the patterns lead the eye towards that hillock. And also the river does exactly the same thing. I think uh, symmetry in images is quite important, but here I have positioned the hillock towards the left. As we shall see later with interior shots. I think symmetry becomes more important in, for example, church interiors, and you'll see some examples of that a little bit later. East Head, Chichester Harbour, can be quite windy, quite blowy, best of times. And to emphasise that with the grasses bending over from left to right, I've left in the composition plenty of space on the right hand side. A little bit of information now related to the metadata which you might find important. With the grass quite close to the camera, everything is sharp from front to back. Now first of all I went aperture priority f11 but in addition I manually focused in about 50 feet. This is known as the hyperfocal distance to ensure that everything is absolutely sharp. The other thing I've done, this is a fairly high key subject, so I have underexposed by a whole stop. This has rendered the clouds a little darker than reality, but I think it works rather nicely, don't you? What is interesting, fascinating about the composition of this image is that the focal point, the most important part of the picture, namely the castle, is the smallest element in the composition and pushed well to the right. The concrete dice, relics of World War II, they were in fact 
tank traps. They become the most important part of the image. And of course, depth of field, as explained in the last image, is equally important with this one. Well, just for you, I bend over backwards for my images. Doesn't do my back any good, I suppose. But this is something I sussed out well before taking the picture. And of course, with this particular shot, symmetry was very important as part of the composition. It is incidentally handheld. I am not using a tripod. So that gives me a bit more freedom when it comes to the composition. And, well, you might not think it's sharp because I've handheld. This particular image has been reproduced in a magazine. Well, an example, and I think a particularly good one, in my approach to symmetry. Something I think that the medieval master masons were very much aware of when they designed this particular cathedral and of course many others. Photographically the main problem of course is the dynamic range. The far distance where the windows are are much brighter than the choir stalls. I go against normal advice here. This is not HDR. I underexpose, then correct in Lightroom. I'm of course saving to RAW. Nevertheless, the problem could be noise. But quite frankly, I prefer a bit of noise than blown out highlights, the windows in the distance, and they are getting pretty close to that. The other problem, which you will not be aware of, thankfully, are people. And there you just have to have patience. And I've got plenty of it, I can tell you. I'm not imprisoned by the cult in landscape photography of just early morning and late evening pictures. If you're into landscape photography professionally, then you have to show the client that you're quite capable of taking a good landscape picture at any time of day, even in the heat of the midday sun. Nevertheless, I do succumb to them. And this particular shot from the top of Malham Cove, so I'm standing on that famous limestone pavement, but with the low setting sun. It's brought out all the detail in the medieval field patterns, which at other times would, of course, be invisible. We move from late afternoon in Yorkshire to early morning in the Lake District. If you want mist, then you've got to have early morning shots because it doesn't form above a certain temperature. I think the attraction of this shot, with or without the mist, is simplicity. I did wonder whether the wooded knoll on the left-hand side balances sufficiently the jetty on the right-hand side. But anyway, I think it has worked. This shot, still in the Lake District, in fact it was taken the same day as the last one, but now it is 11 o'clock and an element of mist still remains over the scene. When I'm out walking, perhaps long distances, I don't take a load of gear that I will probably not use. But one thing, yes, one thing I sometimes slip into my pocket is the teleconverter. Much lighter to take around, incidentally. And I have used it on this particular picture. I'm on a hilltop on 
quite most common. So I have a bit of flexibility as to where I stand. Nevertheless, I was rather concerned about the blank area on the right-hand side of the image. I think we just about get away with it. Finally, the opportune moment when things can happen very quickly. I had just arrived in a coach with a photographic party. It was raining outside. No time at all for the niceties of the situation. You either take it quickly or forget it. Nevertheless, the rainbow did remain a little longer in time for that lady to walk into the picture at precisely the best and most important place. The trees on the right hand side I feel balance the picture and in the final presentation I did, I'm afraid, get rid of the White House in the distance and also the lady's Jack Russell dog. If you can see it, it is foraging in the bushes below the tree. Well, we have, I hope, finished the selection together. Now, the keen-eyed amongst you who were looking at the metadata bottom left-hand side may have noticed that I'm using a variety of Olympus cameras spanning something like 16 years from the E1 of 2003 to my current camera, the EM1 Mark you might think that micro four thirds is not good enough for club photography, but I can tell you that I get my photographs reproduced frequently in books and magazines. So they are quite happy about it. And incidentally, again going against all rules, every single image you have seen are handheld, so no tripods no filters, so I'm giving you the images pure and simple just like myself. All right there's been a bit of adjustment in Lightroom but not too much.